Right, a very good evening to you. How are you doing? He's hoping that all is well from wherever part of the world you're watching us. This is In Focus and my name as always is Eugene Anangwe. And right on the program we get to talk about various issues that are emerging and of course with an aim of making proper understanding about those particular issues. The show is very interactive. All you need to do if you're on social media networks like Twitter, just simply add the hashtag In Focus. RW. You don't have to mention me or RBA Rwanda. Simply add the hashtag in focus RW. My team and I will be following that hashtag to read your tweets live right here on the program. So today on the program we have yet another political conversation right here. And of course we all know that today marks day three of the presidential campaigns right here. And of course they are now exactly 18 days left to the August 3rd and 4th presidential elections right in Rwanda. Now the Rwanda Patriotic Front's presidential candidate who is also the incumbent president Paul Kagame continued his campaign trail in the southern province with rallies in Nyavagave, Huye and Kamonyi district and of course these rallies have been witnessed by huge numbers of people uh, coming in to listen in to the RPF's presidential uh, candidate. Dr. Frank Havineza, the Democratic Green Party of Rwanda's uh, presidential candidate, today did not uh, campaign, but he has, however, been meeting party members and supporters over the past two days. And, of course, uh, he spent the better part of today doing interviews. And, of course, he's right here in the show today with us to talk about his manifesto. And meanwhile, independent uh, candidate uh, Felipe Maimana was in Save Sector, Gisagara District for day three of his campaigns. And later in the afternoon, Maimana held a rally in Mukura Sector in Huya District. He's been putting up a spirited effort in campaigning uh, for the top job right here in Rwanda. And we all know that election periods are seasons of promises here and there and what do these manifestos really mean and today on the program we are starting off with analyzing the manifesto of the democratic green party of rwanda let me introduce my panelists right here uh, with me dr frank abineza thank you so much for joining us on the program it's a pleasure thank and you. of course today you have not campaigned no we haven't campaigned today. okay you'll be giving us more details on that also we have uh, dr israel Buchanan. thank you so much for being with thank us thank you for political scientists and also analysts on political issues thank you for being with us thank you so much now dr Havineza. Yes. Um, one of the things that many people have always been asking every time we talk about you, every time you stand out, every time you're debating with others, I always ask you, what is it that you are bringing on the table? And that has always been the question. And probably today is a better day to actually share this. Mm -hmm. And I'll start off with a quote that you made during the uh, Liber Liberation Day celebration. It's a tweet you, you threw out there. And uh, you said, and I quote, happy liberation day to all rwandans i promise you total liberation and i will do what the rpf government failed to do these very strong words in terms of you know making your intentions hard as far as politics is concerned so what is this that you want to do to people that the rpf has failed to do let's start there okay thank you very much uh, i'll start with the justice sector. Mm -hmm. uh, the RPF uh, government uh, has taken over the control of uh, uh, the judiciary. And how is that? Because they have taken away the supremacy of the Supreme Court by making sure that the decisions of the Supreme Court should be appealed to the Ombudsman, Ombudsman. So this one takes away the notion or of the independence or the separation of powers. Mm -hmm. So this is something which is very strange because all over the world, the principle of separation of powers is respected. The judiciary works separately, the parliament or the legislature separately, and the executive separately. So no one all over the world can question a decision of a court of law. Mm -hmm. And moreover, a Supreme Court is a Supreme which is the highest court of the land, no one can question that. So in Rwanda, you can question that by going to the ombudsman. Now, now hold so that, that one, hold that yeah, we're going to repeal that, one, that yes. and make sure that we maintain the uh, separation of powers mm -hmm. because this is the principle of rule of law. Mm -hmm. Because there cannot be any rule of law 
when the judiciary is not suspected, when we don't have fair and equitable justice. Dr. Buchanan, you've heard what he says. He feels mm. that the ruling party has actually hijacked the judicial system. He says, uh, you know, uh, the, it can be questioned, and, and this is something that he feels should not be the case. Your quick take on this. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, for sure, uh, let's appreciate uh, what Doctor is talking about and make sure that uh, I'm not here to judge uh, our uh, president uh, candidate on the it's just a matter of uh, share the idea and uh, and i'm here as an academician to see how to make sure how uh, institution works together uh, i think it takes what he's talking about is in terms of like saying that first of all uh, one thing i would disagree with that uh, is not that uh, the party rpf even though i'm not uh, talking on behalf of the rpf I'm talking on part of sharing the uh, the knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I'm looking at in, to, in, the, in the three different sectors mm -hmm. when it comes to the legislature, when it comes to the executive, and when it comes to the judicial part of it. Of course, I agree with him that uh, judicial should be uh, independent, which is true. But, and I think you look at the Rwandan situation, I would disagree with that one because the Supreme Court is an independent institution. In, in, in the government, but having in a, what he's trying to say is how ombudsman comes in when it comes to debate, and you have to look at the concept of the ombudsman with the Swedish uh, criteria of ombudsman, and I don't think uh, ombudsman is there to intervene uh, in the business of uh, Supreme Court. Is there just to make sure that there is a fair, a fairness, because those who are working in the Supreme Court also, mm -hmm. they are human beings. Mm -hmm. But, but, uh, and this mistake. question here yes. is that uh, if you are not happy, if the government or anyone is not happy with the decision of the, high, the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. you can appeal it to the ombudsman, mm -hmm. and then the ombudsman or the Muvuni can repeal that decision, mm -hmm. which takes away that supremacy of the Supreme mm -hmm. Court or the independence of the judiciary. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the, the ombudsman is part of the executive branch of the government. It's okay. not a judicial organ. Okay. So basically, that's interference mm -hmm. into the judiciary. So mm -hmm. that's the number one thing we are going to restore the independence of the judiciary and make sure that uh, our courts are respected and they can mm -hmm. give fair and equitable justice to all Rwandans. Yeah, but this same judicial system that you uh, seem to be actually... Uh, can I uh, finalize uh, what, what I was talking? Yes. By being an ombudsman, I don't look at uh, what is the relationship between ombudsman and uh, the party you are mentioning, the RPF. No, it's the, we are not talking about the party itself. Yes. We are talking about the government, the RPF okay. red government, okay. which is the one which brought the proposal mm -hmm. to appeal the decisions of the Supreme Court, the ombudsman. Mm -hmm. So it's not uh, PL government or uh, PSD government, it's the RPF led government which mm -hmm. did that. So, because he was asking me that what uh, do I say? What do I mean? Mm -hmm. That we are going to do what the RPF has not done, mm -hmm. or what or to collect mm -hmm. what has not been what has been done. So how wrong. are we going to do this? I mean, so the first of, of all, we restore the supremacy. We repeal that law. We how? remove that law. It's very simple. I mean, you, you, we, you we make the, sure you we revise the, you the, the law. The, you we make need a the parliament law. as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. we make a new law. Yes, and uh, if we are being elected to lead this country, mm -hmm. it's very simple. We will convince the parliament to make a new law and make sure that the ombudsman can do its work, which was intended of it. because this was not intended originally in the duties of ombudsman. Mm -hmm. It was introduced, I think, one year ago. It's something new which came, and many others do not know actually about that. So it's not something which was intended under the duties of ombudsman in the constitution. So that's something small. Right, but how do you convince then parliament again, that you do not have the numbers? First of all, let, let, let's, that's, let's, that's, 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 we have parliamentary elections next year, so mm -hmm. let's not go into that. Mm -hmm. we, if we win this, we will also win the next parliamentary elections. So that's not the problem. The problem also is that we don't have a constitutional court. So we are going to make sure that we establish a constitutional court which will help us to explain matters relating to the constitution, safeguarding our constitution, so that no one jumps out of the blue to hijack our constitution. So when we have the constitutional court, and then we have the uh, supremacy of the Supreme Court, then we will at least be like a 90% under the rule of law country. Yeah, but still, I mean, what I was going to ask before, uh, you know, Dr. Israel came in was mm. the same... Ismail. Uh, Ismail. Mm. I always call you Israel. <laughs> I don't know why, but Ismail. Okay. Yeah, from, yeah. I mean, they all come from the same family. <laughs> Listen, um, you know, yeah. you seem to be feeling that there's a weakness in this same uh, judicial system, which actually gave you a chance and had your case uh, during... No, we are not uh, talking about uh, the, that the Supreme Court is weak. We mm. are saying we want to strengthen it because we know that 
the Supreme Court should be more independent than the way it is. Mm -hmm. And to, we are not questioning its independence, but we are questioning mm -hmm. some, the one who put a law to appeal its decisions. That's to mm -hmm. That means the decision of the Supreme Court can be notified, which is not heard of all over the world. Because when the people who started this uh, democracy thing, and who said the republic things, you know, these things started a long, long time ago from Greek and elsewhere. They made sure that there will be separation of powers. And these institutions can work together, but no one should interfere with each other. So this is what we're going to make sure that we restore the independence of our institutions. And even the parliament will see how we can do more capacity building for it. Mm. To be how does it make this happen from an academician point of view? Uh, I, don't, I don't think this is going to work because this is a policy which has been f for quite long in a Bosman thing, almost like a 200 years mm -hmm. from the Swedish thing. And uh, when there is this so-called imbalance between the citizen and, st and the state, mm -hmm. I think that is the role of uh, a Bosman to protect the interest of the, the individuals toward the state. And I think what the ombudsman is doing mm. in terms of is not that is interfering in the business of uh, Supreme Court, but is trying to make sure that anyone who is complaining an individual is complaining against the government, mm -hmm. so that the government also c should be responsible. Yeah. So ombudsman is trying to to stop that imbalance mm -hmm. or to stop that kind of uh, and complain when somebody is maybe is not happy with the, mm -hmm. the decision. Mm -hmm. Let's give an example. But before you go to let, let give an example, let, 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 let me give so let, they can let's substantiate the point. Before it's the more example, important let, 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 This is very, very important. Exactly. Yeah, let's hear first of all. Let him finish. Sure. Just finish the Because the my point of view is that to say, you have to understand the, the, the role of ombudsman. Yes. What is the role really? Seriously. The role is not to interfere. The role is to protect the citizen, first of all. To make sure, uh, because people were working even in the Supreme Court or whatever uh, court exists, a Muslim has a right of negotiating so that people can get their right. right. Yeah. Yeah. The role yeah. of a Muslim yes. is mm. not to protect the people from the courts of law, but it's to protect people from the government. When the government does some, uh, let's say, uh, un undesirable, uh, this takes undesirable decisions. So when you talk about Sweden, mm. I have been a Swedish citizen. Okay. I just relinquished my Swedish citizenship. Mm. Uh, one, two months ago. Yeah. So I do understand very well how it yeah. works. Okay. So no one actually in Sweden can ever question any decision of the, leave alone the Supreme Court, even a, a small court, like mm -hmm. court of uh, district court. No one can. The, argument the ombudsman can protect people if government takes decisions mm -hmm. contrary to the constitution or contrary to other laws, but not contrary to the decisions taken by any court of law. So this is what we want to restore it's not that we take out the ombudsman, we strengthen the ombudsman, the London Constitution, the way it had intended it officially before, it was okay. But this introduction of a new law, it was a hijacking of the supremacy of the Supreme Court. We are going to restore that, and very soon, and we make sure we have a constitutional court which will help us to safeguard our constitution and other laws of the land. Right. The argument for those who we are... We can go to a second issue, yes, because that's will. not the only we issue we have in our and uh, this is taking we, more we, time. We, we, we actually push so it. maybe I could take you to something no, no, no. more. No, no, no. I'm going to well. control this conversation. Thank and you. It's okay. We will do what, uh, what <laughs> yeah. we have to do. Mm. But what I want to... Uh, so that we put this to rest. Mm -hmm. Some people who feel that this system is good, it's working for us, mm -hmm. they would say that we, we haven't complained. I mean, th there's no day that this has worked against and we are us. Complaining. Why do you want to change this? Because we are complaining. Mm -hmm. We have legal experts mm -hmm. and we have uh, judicial experts. We have been analyzing everything that's taking place in this country. We know that the intention of Bosman was a good intention originally. And uh, we know that uh, the introduction of this new thing that Bosman should question or someone can question mm -hmm. the uh, validity of the decisions or the decisions taken by the Supreme Court is something uh, very bad. Let me say like that. So uh, this has to be taken out immediately. If we need to have a country which we call a country which is under the rule of law principle, which is respected, one is respected country, but we must respect the principle of separation of powers to make sure that all our institutions are independent. And there is no way we can be independent if we know that the decisions of our courts can be questioned by the, by the executive branch of the government, which means uh, the president is the head of the executive branch of the government. If he can question the decisions of court, then there's no independence of the judiciary, there's no independence of the institution. It means that we will not be in any uh, country which respects the law of law. So this first thing on uh, early September, 
that what we do first. So but I have another issue to say. You have another issue, but, 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 but let me take you also to uh, the other issue which you talked about, Dr. Buchan, and you can come in uh, mm -hmm. with this. But the other key thing that you also talked about uh, on, on, on the issue of the economy, and this, you actually said it very recently, you were quoted in one of the uh, dailies that you said, we will reduce value-added tax from 18% to 15%. Mm -hmm. yeah. We will build you a modern boat that will help you access other districts such as Rubavu and others to boost trade and cooperation in the district. Let's spend a few minutes and talk about this issue of reducing of taxes. And some people feel that you're making popularist statements that will make people, you know, clap for you and say, yay, let's vote for him because he's going to reduce the taxes. But you forget what is the need of this tax as far as the economy is concerned. Thank you very much. Uh, I will tell you uh, the rationale behind all this. First of all, who pays value added tax? VAT, TVA. It's the people. So the more the taxes are higher, the more expensive the goods we buy will be. So we want people of Rwanda to remain with some money so that they can have enough savings. So what we do first is we're going to reduce this uh, TVA, VAT, by 20%. Could be around 14 to 15%, per percent the, the, the new uh, rate that will be. Mm. Then the people will have more money. But uh, we are not doing only that. There are other things we are going to do. Of course, we are going to do more taxes. When we do more taxes, you may think that where we shall we get the money to run the government? And what is even informing this decision? Yes, we have a, a, exactly. A, a research so, study you've done. Yes, we know. Impact we have analysis. talked to businessmen mm -hmm. in this country, mm -hmm. and we have had even uh, uh, some uh, had meetings with the business community, and they've told us the problems they've been having. That it's now difficult, even if you have been a billionaire, to make a uh, business in this country. The, it's so difficult because of the high taxes and some people have actually decided to cross over to Uganda, to Malawi, to Zambia and other countries because they think that the taxes are too high here and too many also. So we say after getting those complaints from the business community and also from the local traders who say that even if you are having a small business of 100,000 francs, let's say that's about uh, uh, $150 you still pay high taxes and it's still even, you can fail even to make any business at all or close down. So we say that we are going to introduce a, a first one combined tax system which is actually being used now in India whereby all the taxes are put together and when you pay these taxes you don't feel that big burden. Uh, then again uh, we make sure we have a progressive taxation model whereby you pay according to your capacity. So, I give an example for this income tax uh, for all the uh, civil servants. If I'm not mistaken, I think people who get from 300,000 francs to uh, maybe the highest uh, employer, I mean, uh, the employee gets uh, about 5 million uh, or 4 million around there. So, you find that you all pay taxes under the same bracket. So, you find that it becomes too unfair for someone who has a very little income paying the same tax percentage, like the one who has, let's say, 5 million or 4 million or even 1 million. So we need to see how we can recalculate these taxes, and people pay taxes, but don't feel the burden. But for the business community, where maybe where there's the biggest uh, problem that you are mentioning, yeah. we know that if we reduce these taxes, the tax burden will reduce, and then we will be able to reduce tax evasion, because the people being running away from the taxes, then we have a larger tax base now so once mm -hmm. you have a larger tax base this means we have more money inside the country right. then people running away from Fair our enough. country mm -hmm. uh, dr ismail i mean uh, there's a context mm -hmm. as to why we have the 18 percent for as vat in mm -hmm. rwanda and, and and part of it also is the landlockedness yeah, of, exactly. of the country yeah, exactly. and and for the country to be able to sustain its own economy as well uh, you know, there are different measures that are taken, exactly. including, uh, you know, value-added value tax. tax um, Dr. Avineza here says that reducing this will actually increase a tax base. It will also avoid tax evasion, and it will also keep more businesses, uh, you know, alive. I mean, mm. how practical is this from an academician uh, point of view? I don't think, I don't, I don't understand how it's going to do that. But, of course, that is a reality to mention. It's not a, a big motion to say. But uh, reduce, reducing the tax... Uh, for me, it's, it has to come out with a formula whereby it shows how this thing is going to work. Uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, we have to understand even, mm -hmm. uh, maybe 
uh, on part of academician as we ask, I don't mm. know if he maybe he has done a research on that to yeah. make sure that uh, how he understands how people feel mm -hmm. when it comes to the uh, reduction of the taxes and so on. Mm -hmm. I think for me, uh, what I capture from what he's, he's, he's talking about yeah. is that uh, maybe there are so many taxes in Rwanda, mm -hmm. that's what he's trying to say, so that he want to look at which angle he can come in to make sure that uh, taxes are not. But uh, I don't think uh, by reducing the tax in Rwanda, mm -hmm. uh, yes, you may come out with a debate on that, mm -hmm. but I think uh, the best thing to do that is better to come out with the research and come out to come out with debate with the public opinion so you can understand what the public opinion are talking about. Right. But of course, Rwanda is relying on, on a tax. Sure. But of course, it's not that Rwanda is taking slightly. Why we, they did, the government of Rwanda did not take more than 30% uh, or 20%? Yeah. It's just stop on 80%. It may be high yeah. due to some, uh, some uh, different facts and reasons. But of course, if there is a big debate on that, reducing could be part of a debate and they look and looking at what that needs a are. public conversation because i have never a, seen mm -hmm. any uh, people are complaining eh? but, i mean most rwandese mm. maybe maybe few but we have to make sure that uh, how many people have we complained about the taxes i know Rwanda? even from the academic point the academicians exactly. the teachers and even the professors even i know that the, under the tax bracket mm. since you are a lecturer you are paying 30 percent yeah exactly from your income tax yeah, so exactly. i know people have approached us telling us mm -hmm. this is we are getting not really much according to uh, people have been i've studied i've read books mm -hmm. but the income they are getting is not good enough and they're paying a high tax probably the whatever. question here so is what's now, the formula doctor what is for us, formula? but you know i want to first say you that mm -hmm. for us we have had taken time mm -hmm. to talk to teachers to the uh, medical practitioners the businessmen and the local people they have all told us that we think we could do better if these taxes had been Reduced. Under which formula? Mm -hmm. So the in formula, I said, first of all, exactly. we have an Indian taxation model, mm -hmm. which combines all taxes together. So if people, it works in India, it will work in Rwanda. And people in India have been able to become rich because that is the government has recognized that if we have too many taxes, people will run away from the tax. We we'll start uh, running, hiding, and doing what? And you know, even Rwanda even Authority has been saying that there are a lot of people evading tax here in Rwanda. They've been catching them, even these machines, the IBM machines. Mm -hmm. People are trying to even forge them to forge the seeds to do what? So basically, because people they are not happy to, take the ta to pay the taxes. But like I've lived in Sweden, in Sweden people are happy to pay their taxes mm -hmm. because you, you 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 feel you pay your taxes, but it's not that big burden to you. You still have enough money to stay with and if you're doing business if you do your calculations very well you pay your taxes and you don't feel the burden so basically it's a good thing to reduce taxes and have a bigger tax base mm -hmm. than having too many taxes and they have fewer taxpayers so this would be good for rwanda mm -hmm. all right let's take a very uh, quick look at what people are saying out here of mm -hmm. course uh, it's a conversation that we're having right here with the presidential candidate uh, for the Democratic Green Party. And of course, uh, we are receiving your thoughts via the hashtag in focus RW. Keep them coming. One of them is from Mecha Rosa who says, about taxes, I think uh, uh, Frank Aveneza is just trying to get attention. Our economy depends on the 18%. This is what he says. Uh, another one here from Karambizi Olivier says, can Dr. Frank Aveneza quote from the mandate of the office of the Ombudsman to prove his claim. I think this is important that you actually substantiate this. Mm -hmm. On the issue that you said about the Ombudsman interfering with I, the I judicial system. Back into that. No, just, just answer this, this voter. He might be a person who will vote for you <laughs> and you're just ignoring him. No, the, the new, there's a new revision uh, which has been introduced into the Constitution which allows mm -hmm. the, uh, the people to mm -hmm. question or to appeal the decisions of the Supreme Court to the Ombudsman. Mm -hmm. So originally the Ombudsman did not have that. The Ombudsman, uh, I don't question with what the, the Ombudsman should be doing because the objective of the Ombudsman is good. It's a good intention. Mm -hmm. But this introduction by the government to, uh, to appeal the decisions mm -hmm. of the Supreme Court Ombudsman mm -hmm. is what we question. Mm -hmm. It's what is taking away the independence of the judiciary. That's what we are saying. That's what we are going to repeal mm -hmm. on day number one. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are, have other issues we are going to, uh, to, uh, to remove on day number one, the issues of food security. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we know that we have been getting too much complaints from all over the country that the issue of land consolidation, where government has told people to do, to do, to do monocropping, to plant one crop in their gardens, has caused widespread food 
shortage. And that is country. part of the items of the yeah, things so that we we'll talk about. Number later. one issue which we're going to show. That's yes. I mentioned the justice sector, but yes. also the food security yes. issues. I will other. build on that when yeah. we come from the break. Of course, thank you so much. Keep bringing those uh, tweets. I see in Shuti Mbawazi, uh, who's uh, Lucy Mbawazi via Twitter, says, with tax reduction and limited tax base, how will he fund the initiatives he's proposing? We'll talk about those initiatives and he'll be able to get a chance to respond to that particular question when we come back from the break. Keep tweeting. Only use the hashtag in focus rw and that is what we'll be following to sample some of your tweets throughout the program stay with us come but the direction of events it just stops being about talking right now as we speak intra esc trade has gone, gone down. down yes why is it going down we must interrogate ourselves they are competing ideologies which one why it's, it's being I mean, talked about. there's excitement yeah. in tanzania yeah. hold on hold can, can, can i can i uh, what agenda does a woman who presents themselves today as a, a presidential candidate that this woman does this gender come to present so for you the major thing is not about the agenda it's about the agenda the agenda absolutely that they bring. you know the quality the quality will be the same mm -hmm. i'm taking this uh, issue of betting as another form as an of investment. business and as an a investment, form of investment. Form of, form of so investment. you're an entrepreneur and in the category of sports betting of course mm. yeah. other than raising points to be discussed they yeah. can decide yeah. she asks what has he done the problem is respond. Are you wait, wait, wait. Let me finish my question. <laughs> <laughs> Abineza can get 5% of the vote. I'll consider joining his party. So, thinking of success seven years from now, and most likely the people as president again to run again, will ask him again then. Do you think so, he's going to accept this? He has always accepted. Many people have been asking what we have been up to. Well, we have told the different stories from decision makers, but this time round, it will be different. We will be getting head to head with various influencers and get to the heart of the matter. It is not an easy ride, but we'll endeavor to get you there. It will be insightful, informative, and at times we will agree to disagree because we are the bridge to your leaders. Right, thank you so much for still being with us. It is in focus, and of course, my name as always is Eugene Anangwe. Tonight on the program, we are reviewing the manifesto or the promise of Dr. Frank Havineza to Rwanda as far as the presidential election is concerned. He's here talking to us about his manifesto, part of it, and of course, some of the key issues that are emerging from it. And we're also reading your tweets. Send them via the hashtag in focus RW. We'll be able to read them right here. Dr. Avineza, thank you so, so much for still being with us. There are so many other issues that you've spoken about as far as uh, what you want to do for Rwanda is concerned. One of them uh, also is the issue of youth uh, and, and, and youth uh, employment. And one of the things that you said is we will help the youth get jobs upon completion. And, of course, we will create job opportunities and link job seekers to clients. We will build you a modern boat that will help you access other districts such as Rubavu. This is something that uh, you actually said. And, you know, this is something that young people are not taking lightly. The issue of job opportunities and wealth creation, decent jobs and all that. Let's talk practically. How are you going to do this? Yeah, thank you very much. The first thing we're going to do for the youth of Rwanda is that... We are going to encourage the youth to have to be job, to be more job creators. The government said that before, but the practicalities were not put in place. So, first thing, we reduce, we remove taxes from any youth project, business, cooperative for the first two years. All the youth of Rwanda, whether educated or not educated. If they have a project, they will not pay any tax for two years. They first make money, become rich, then they can pay taxes to the government. That's, that's the first incentive we're going to make to the youth. Two, 
the non-educated youth, we make sure that all these contracts in the districts, in the sector levels, which are there given to other foreigners, foreign companies, uh, the, the youth, uh, they can have a chance to do, manual, to, have, to do manual labor there or manual activities there and get some income uh, from the local government authorities. Mm -hmm. Three, we are going to create a Rwanda Employment Agency. This employment agency will help to connect job seekers with job creators, or those who have jobs and those who do not have jobs. And this will have be an authority on national level, having offices on district level and sector level. Who finances the operation of this agency? How do you finance The government. That? And under which funds? Because you say you're cutting First of all, the major source yes, of funding but do you know the government the actual, projects, which uh, is taxation. It came, came in the tweets here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first thing is we're going to fight corruption 100%. But you, you, you the, seem to be jumping from one issue yes, to another. Yes, yes. Let's stick to the no, wait a on, moment, on, wait a moment. On funding the, this agency. Yes, this in, is where we're going to get the money. Because yes. the Auditor General of Government mm -hmm. has said this year, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, even last year, said that, that the government is losing over 40% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of its mm -hmm. budget through mm -hmm. corruption. Mm -hmm. So, you see Minister Gatete going to the parliament reading our budget, and it says maybe 3,000 uh, billions. I'm giving an example. But 40% of those billions is lost. The government raises the money, we budget for the money, but it's taken, eaten, and no one is held accountable to that. But and you know when they, when they catch, says they always catch the, the, what they call the small fish. The yes. big fish is never caught. Mm -hmm. So we are going to catch the big fish and the small fish, I mean, all the corruptors, we make sure that all our big money, maybe let's say 1,000 billions, has been lost. So that money, we get it back into our economy. So you're putting hopes in saving money that yes, must be lost. That's the first what way. if money is not lost at all? So how do you make money? Then? Because now it's lost. I'm telling you what we're going to do first. We mm -hmm. cover that gap. Mm -hmm. We don't misuse our money, mm -hmm. which has come from those taxes which people are paying so mm -hmm. hardly. Mm -hmm. And then we get that money, put it back into government activities. Mm -hmm. Then we finance the big business All that right. we're supposed to do. Let me hear from uh, Dr. Buchanan uh, uh, on that. And I think the idea is good. The idea is bringing the good. Of cutting taxes? Oh, no, no. The mm -hmm. idea of, uh, of course, trying to help uh, youth to come out with the, the, the stop in this employment. Mm -hmm. But my, my worry is that what the government of Rwanda is doing, what, what are the new input are you going to put there? Mm -hmm. Because so far, you are talking about uh, coming out with the... Uh, uh, some private agencies which can help but my question was the same time because was the same thing and the way you ask mm -hmm. because I, uh, for, for me it seems like uh, uh, sorry to say that because this is not something you can just talk about I think we need to show fact on how the way the strategy you're going to use mm -hmm. so that people can you can convince people otherwise with the government of Rwanda he has done a lot of things in employment is not something you can stop mm -hmm. For, for a day and night. Mm -hmm. In employment is something which will be forever. Right. If is here employment is something yeah. is, is going to be there forever, even the, within even 100 years, 10 years in but employment. But we don't want it to so, be there forever. No, we no. don't want people to remain yeah. poor. Yeah. We no, want the youth of Rwanda to become rich. No. We want Rwanda, they say it, Rwanda will become a middle income country by 2010. But we're remaining with two years yeah. to be there, and we're still not yet there. Right. So we have to move very fast. Mm -hmm. We want to become a real middle-income country, Good. whereby all of us have a, uh, something, mm -hmm. like at least $1,000 mm -hmm. yeah. in our pockets and yeah. so on. Yeah. So first, as I said, we, we make sure we promote the business uh, from the younger people, mm -hmm. the youth, and there are, big, there are very many. Mm -hmm. So we, by removing taxes for two years, I'm not saying permanently, for two years, mm -hmm. at least when they stabilize, then we can tax them. But also we cover this corruption gap, which is a big leakage right. from our, our budget. Right. And that's one mm -hmm. way. We have other ways. Yeah. So yes. Dr. Buchanan was actually wanting to finish his point. I was looking to say that uh, yeah. what are the new strategy are you bringing in when the government of Rwanda has tried to do something? Right. Let's say... Like, Question uh, clear yes. because of time. I have answered that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what is new? I mean... I already mentioned yes. mm -hmm. the issue of promoting the businesses for young people by taking away the taxes for two years. That's one mm -hmm. strategy which mm -hmm. the government of Rwanda has not done. Mm -hmm. So that's something new we are going to do. Two, we make sure we cover all the gaps. We catch all the big fish and the smaller fish which is eating all our money in the Rwandan government. Mm -hmm. So that's the, if we do that, 
we make sure, you know, you have heard from Transparency International, they are still saying that it, look, corruption levels are still going up. Even now, corruption has changed even dimensions because there's many types of corruption. But let's not talk about that. I'm talking about our government money, our government budget, which has been uh, lost. Of course, we have other mechanisms we shall use to make sure that we get more money. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, the issue of the employment agency, I'll give you an example. I've seen, as I said, I lived in Sweden. Mm -hmm. There's an agency in Sweden uh, which we have, uh, has been there for so long, mm -hmm. and it is called Arabes Fomendrigen. It's an authority which links job seekers yeah. to job creators. Mm -hmm. And this authority actually has helped the country so much because everyone who wants a job, you don't start moving on the street looking for a job. Right. You go to this agency. So people of Rwanda, the young people of Rwanda, they will stop walking their shoes off. Because I know when we finish university, I don't have my colleagues who used to work on the street of Kijari and they spend time uh, uh, depositing CVs without finding any job. So I, I, you I just go to this authority, you mm -hmm. register, and then you just wait to check and on the chill. internet, and then they tell there's a job the here, job will you come. get there. And meanwhile, uh, uh, meanwhile yeah. you get a stage, a small yeah. kind of internship, yeah. you can go and teach at a uh, university or yeah. at a secondary yeah. school, yeah. and you'll be paid something yeah. to keep you alive yeah. as you're looking for your dream job. Perfect. So this is what we're going to do. Something new which is not in Rwanda. If you can allow me, I think the government of Rwanda, it, it, some of our students, let's say like uh, we, were, we, did, we were teaching in university, I think RDB has created something like on internship industry, industry attachment, mm -hmm. whereby maybe a student can get a, a So you feel of what money. he says is not new at all? So I think that uh, what uh, doctor is trying to let's, say let's is not take, new in the system. Let's so take a few it's, minutes. It's, it's not, uh, what you're saying, let's not spend it's the first time I hear about the, the, the that. The and and number two, number two, yes. I, don't, I don't understand how you're going to, even in terms of removing taxes to young people mm -hmm. those for two years mm -hmm. for young people two I years think, tax break two I think years even tax for, break for Rwanda I think for the, our young gen mm -hmm. people who are graduating from the school mm -hmm. when they want to create some mm -hmm. uh, they want to create jobs especially because the government of Rwanda also is in the target of looking at students to become the job seekers not job seekers but job creators mm -hmm. they have created those kind of like uh, uh, wikiriro eh? so you feel it's not new at all I think it's not new uh, when it comes to just, one new. Question. Just, yes. just, new. just one mm -hmm. question and it then we, we, we move to your yes. next issue um, you said that the two years tax break is going to help you know build local industries small yes. industries yes. and that's a positive yeah mm. how much do you think we're going to lose as a country from exactly. that tax break? we are not going to lose anything because these are new businesses which are going to start which means have not been part of our tax base so basically we we just postponed for two years when they start they get start making business they start making money but of course they will be buying things so they will be still VAT. they'll be buying uh, commodities in the market, so they will be paying tax in another, way, another format, but not on the income tax here. Yeah. But, but, so it's but, the income tax that we are yeah, talking about, yeah. which we, we give this break for two years, but mm. they will be paying other taxes, like the TVA and others. Mm. So basically, but after the two years, when they, these guys are rich, they have cars and they have something, then they can start paying tax and they're happy mm. to pay taxes. So this one promotes investment and also protects people from running out of the country. Right. The world as far as security is concerned, is one thing that, uh, you know, caused a lot of uh, conversations out there when you preempted some of the things that you will do as a government if elected. Mm -hmm. And one of them was the construction of the wall within uh, the Rwanda-Congo border, uh, just to protect the country from the infiltration from DRC. Um, this is something that is conspicuously missing in, in, in your manifesto. Is this something that you have decided they were to keep off or what are the new measures to safeguard this country as far as security is concerned thank you very much the war uh, which we originally meant was a virtual war there was some uh, uh, wordings which did not go well uh, when people when we are we finalizing the document but we had to put that right the virtual <laughs> war we meant or we mean is that we are going to increase the capacity of our military and other security organs and our police. Uh, of course, more professional, uh, professionalism, training, uh, getting the more So you did not mean so a physical wall? Yeah, so, but the wall, we are going to remove the barriers. That's a, that's, there's a wall, that, that means barriers which stop us from collaborating with other countries. So those barriers, when we take them out, let's say we, want, we need to have better working relationship with Burundi, with Congo, with France. Those barriers, they are, they are walls. But they are virtual wars, not physical wars. We have to take them out. But then, you said you'll put a wall. Now you're saying you'll, you, you said you'll take off the walls. The, those barriers, yeah. So then mm. the virtual wall we are talking about is the Lego mechanism, security mechanism, technological mechanism. Mm -hmm. So technologically, 
We know that our soldiers spend a lot of time patrolling the Volcanoes National Park, mm -hmm. the Lake Kivu, and it's a wide area. That's the northern province and western <coughs> province. Mm -hmm. So we are going to introduce uh, new psychological measures like uh, introducing, hiring or purchasing a satellite who can hire first in the first phase. What money will you use? Guys are confused. Wait saying, a moment. Which wait money a moment. will you use and you're already cutting wait, wait taxes? A moment, my dear. How will you... So we first get this satellite. We can easily rent it uh, in the beginning, which will help us to control this northern and western area where we always have many external threats. Mm -hmm. From there, we see how we can get some uh, drones. Uh, I mean, those which you don't see with the eyes, which move over and that, that can also help us to protect there. So that way, it can help us to remove the burden from our military, which okay. is always patrolling the area. Let me listen from uh, Dr. Ismail. Do you feel safer under what you, what you hear if he was to form the government? Would you feel safer? Do you think it's practical? We're not taking, uh, away, we're not taking away the for mechanism me, we yes, have. Yes. But for, me, dreaming, for me, I like the idea of dreaming big. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. But even... Uh, Let's take an example of the United States, mm -hmm. whereby uh, Trump has tried to come out with the war uh, between America and Mexico. Mm -hmm. Up to now, what is going on? And he's trying to, create, to say that maybe uh, create, I mean, some sophisticated thing, whereby like a CCTV or some kind of like a... But that also, whatever you are, you are reducing the tax, you're going to inject other money in that, mm -hmm. building that one. Mm -hmm. I think there's nothing wrong with... The, the world is becoming global. I think we should look at other way of living in harmony with, the, with the, our neighbor countries mm. by putting war. Mm. And so far, what are we trying to say is politically, what are we trying, if, if in my opinion, this is my opinion, I think, I think, uh, you sh I think we should try to see how diplomatically we can live in harmony with those, those mm. people. Mm. If there is a way of doing that, yeah. But renting, renting something like a, mm -hmm. a satellite, mm -hmm. you are renting something, yeah. so that is cost of money, so which yeah. means you are using the budget of... Yeah. No, we have the a solution to that. The budget of that. We you have see. a solution to uh, the budget. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Let yeah. me finish my yeah. thing. Finish. My thought is to say that mm. I, I think now Rwanda has, has benchmark, which means that in terms of security, mm -hmm. has positioned yeah. itself yeah. in the best position. Right. There is we no have only 10 safety. minutes. Yes, <laughs> yes. I think we've got your point, Dr. Uh, Ismail. Uh, you know, he brings in a very key thing mm. of diplomacy. What play, I mean, mm. uh, you know, uh, working together with others. We are now talking integration. Mm. We're now talking, you know, foreign East African relations. Community. East African community. Yes. Talk to me a bit about this. As, and as you tell me this, I think you could be the first person to react to uh, the reaction by the president concerning what he termed as meddling interference by foreign diplomats who are meeting you and other uh, aspiring candidates? Uh, before I go to that, mm -hmm. I want to say that if you read properly our uh, political program, mm -hmm. we have an issue of our diplomacy. It's, very, it's a key issue in yeah. our political, mm -hmm. foreign policy. Mm -hmm. So our government will put much efforts and dialogue. More talk, talk, talk to all uh, People will have problem with uh, the presumed enemies, the enemies, those with guns, You'll talk to those all without of them. guns, mm -hmm. those who are uh, hostile uh, elements, mm -hmm. or what they call negative forces. Mm -hmm. The solution is talking to them. Mm -hmm. So that's a key issue of our diplomatic area. That's why we say we're going to restore relationship with Burundi, France, and Congo by talking to them. Mm -hmm. So we remove all those barriers, those walls which are... Uh, surrounding us to remove them, so that way we make sure that we have a better relationship. So we're not taking away that we're putting more efforts in there, but then on the security, we put more technological efforts to make sure that our soldiers, yes, they can do the patrolling, but when they have other backup here. Mm. So, and there's another good thing that you, we have had recently, because about the money, uh, you know that Rwanda has, uh, they have discovered oil in Rwanda. The mm -hmm. Canadians have been, uh, they have found the oil here and there have been some so we're going to do it, yes. So when we get some oil, we have more money. So basically there will be no problem of money as we reduce corruption, but we also have oil. So there will be no problem of money in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. The new government, the new Rwanda, we are saying it will be a, a rich Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So when I go back to the question you said about the president, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you said interference? Yes. So what was uh, the problem? Yes, the meetings with the foreign the diplomats, the, the EU, you, you've been, you, you met <laughs> them, uh, the, 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 the Swedish ambassador, yes. and, 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 and to the president, you know, this sounded uh, like meddling, interference but, uh, in the process. I saw the president uh, even uh, one, two days or three days ago before the campaign started, he was in Israel. 
Yeah, but no, meeting, but we're being practical. Uh, there was meeting, a statement uh, that was the made by the... That this is a campaign okay. period. Probably, probably so, the, uh, let me the make the question direct. Let me, meeting, let me make the question. Let me refresh the question, Dr. Havineza. You know, the president yes, let me, let me make the... Diplomats let, every year for purposes, for purposes of proper understanding uh, of my question or not yeah. getting it out of context, let me refresh my question. Mm -hmm. The European Union, uh, uh, you know, ambassador was categorical in a tweet uh, mm -hmm. with a picture with an aspiring candidate and he categorically said that he wanted the Electoral Commission to state as soon as possible the reason as to why all independent candidates were blocked out. I want to hear from you. If you were president and someone from the diplomatic corps mm -hmm. did such a thing, how would you take that? You know, as, uh, uh, because the president is the top diplomat mm -hmm. of the country, I wouldn't go to the media to talk about that. I would use uh, my diplomatic mechanism, mm -hmm. my Minister of Foreign Affairs, even now we have an able Minister of Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. That we, and ask her, please, can you check on that problem? Mm -hmm. So if I would be president, I would be cool. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mention that in the media. Mm -hmm. I would just be cool asking the Minister Louise, please, can you check uh, what's going on there? And then you can solve that. So I think uh, the president has a right uh, to say what he says as a top diplomat of the country. Mm -hmm. But if I were him, mm -hmm. I wouldn't go to the media to talk about that. I would talk, mm -hmm. I would deal with my Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, right. Uh, I think uh, maybe Dr. Havineza will buy this with me. You are, let's say you become the future president. I don't think interference in the business of the country mm. is someone which is a generation of the sovereignty of the country. Mm. I, I even, even I disagree with that, that the president went to the media to talk about that. Mm. Because he may be asked by the journalist to reflect on what uh, those political parties mm. has been going through, going mm. to discuss with mm. us. So I, don't, I think it's the right to say, to mention as the president of the republic so that nobody can interfere in the business mm. because if mm. we know how our political thing election is working yeah but it, interference I, of those european countries yeah. into first of all they have started before that yeah. they are not going even to come to the to become part of the of, uh, election observation thing yeah. 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 so why they now interference in the business of neck that is something which i, I Imagining the country, yeah. the image of the country. Yeah. So I don't think the president has have this kind of intention of putting the public on the media. Mm. I think he has been asked by the journalists to reflect to that yeah. one, so, yeah. and he has right to do that. It was it was just a question and already. And I, don't, already I, I don't support interference. Let mm. me make this clear. I don't yeah. support interference exactly. yeah. by foreign states into the national politics. But I say that uh, political politicians. Uh, in Rwanda or in any country, have a right to speak to diplomats, mm -hmm. whether you are a presidential aspirant or mm -hmm. not, whether you're a minister or not. Uh, but the minister, I think, you have to be uh, to be representing the government. Mm -hmm. But if you are political parties in Rwanda, the diplomats have met all different political parties. Mm -hmm. So it's they are here representing their governments, mm -hmm. and they need to know what's taking place in the country. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so it's just a normal thing. Yeah. But I say, if I was the president. If there was something that I was not happy with, mm. I wouldn't just go uh, answer it directly to the media. I would ask my Minister of Foreign Affairs to deal with that problem, mm. to save the face so that uh, I'm not taking that uh, 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 like as if, uh, uh, yeah, that it's there, not good. There, there's something I want to comment. Very quickly, to, Dr. There's Ingman, something I want to comment to what uh, yes. maybe Dr. Avineza is something which likely. Uh, do you think it's easy to talk to your enemy straight away as a president in, a, in the office? Like... The way you say that uh, by taking the office, you are ready to talk to the enemies straight away. Do you mm -hmm. think it's an easy way mm -hmm. in time? Mm -hmm. First of all, when it, politically, when there is this kind of so-called enemies, mm -hmm. you need to use the way of a diplomatic way. Mm -hmm. There is no way you just say, it's not simply think you can wake up in the morning mm -hmm. and talk to the people because simply to say. And I think Rwanda has tried the, its best in terms of talking. We have a, a yeah. new You see, the government yes. of Rwanda, we're yeah. yeah. having problem with the, you see, we have a problem yeah. with the Vatican and so on. Yeah. So how, how long have you taken? So yeah. that step was the diplomatic way of solving. Mm -hmm. And now I think that Rwanda is doing, is doing great in terms mm -hmm. of solving those things. Right. We used to have a problem with the, the, the DRC, but what happened now later on? So the government have tried to do this their best. I think it's a matter of time of how you can deal with the so-called enemy, because if they don't likely to talk to you openly, mm. so why do you need to force? We'll find new yourself? mechanism. Exactly. So we have new mechanism. So we have now my question will be yes. to the question very quickly, very exactly. briefly. What is your question? My question will be: What are the strategies are you going to use? in talking to your enemy, mm. whereby compared to what the government in position, the government of Rwanda has done. In 30 so seconds, far, Dr. Avineza, if seconds. you can. Yeah, so we have a new institution. Uh, we call it Inama Kaminoza. It's like a, a highest uh, council, mm. uh, which we shall use uh, to make sure that people 
uh, can use that uh, mechanism mm -hmm. inside the country, outside the country, to give different ideas uh, from local levels, things which people call taboo here, which they cannot talk about, we can talk about them, and then we bring these issues on the national level to see how we can solve that. So people from the exile, where people normally do not, cannot go to the embassies, or embassies talk to them, we find a new mechanism of how they can uh, have, uh, bring into their idea, uh, or have a separate meeting there with them, and then they can have their ideas, and then try to solve the problem. Because before you look at the gun someone is having, look at the cause which, which made him carry that gun. So that's what we are going to look at the causes, and then that's one of the strategies, looking at the cause and finding solutions to those uh, to root cause of the problems. So mm -hmm. that way it's more diplomacy, more and more patience. Of course, there has been some level of patience within the like LIPF government. We see that they are trying to be more patient, more tolerant. Mm -hmm. Something good we see now, which mm -hmm. is good. But my government will have more tolerance, more patience, and more ability to talk, to make sure that Rwanda is a country where the people can be in, in outside the country, but not in exile, can be there looking mm -hmm. for jobs mm -hmm. or uh, economic problem, not reasons, but not saying that we are refugees or that we don't we hate Rwanda because not of this and that. Right. Um, in conclusion, we have uh, a tweet here. Uh, one of them uh, from uh, Vigil Abaya who says, please ask Frank how secure he thinks Rwanda is. Is he saying that we want drones and CCTVs to uh, tighten security? Another last one here. Stop over dreaming, Havineza. We know who we want because of what, we sh what he has shown us. Mm -hmm. By the way, we are not bothered with our tax system. As you answer or choose not to answer some of these questions, some people feel that when you talk of the issue of fit to lead the country, they feel you do not have the experience, you don't have the level, you don't have the capacity. What do you tell them in closing, probably insinuating why you believe you're fit for this job? No, I think uh, people, a president does not work alone. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. president mm -hmm. works with institutions. That's why we want to have more... Uh, independence of all our institutions, the judiciary, the parliament, and all others. So those all support the president. So the pre people vote for someone because of the ideas, not because of past experience or what you promise them, what you can deliver, and then, the, then they wait to see, to evaluate you if what you promise you can deliver to them. So me, I promise the people of Rwanda that I will deliver more than what the government has done. Mm -hmm. And I promise new things. If you look into my, our political program, we have new, new institutions which we have put there, we cannot discuss all of them in one hour, but we have new institutions which will help to make this country better. Mm -hmm. A new Rwanda, a richer Rwanda, where everyone will be happy, where everyone will feel you, are, you can speak, you can dream big, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you can make your dreams come true. Right. Do these numbers scare you? I mean, the numbers that you're seeing in the campaign trail, we've seen the president's rallies, we've seen yours, we've seen my manners. Doesn't it scare you no. that you feel like this is a dumb thing? <laughs> we, we are not scared by that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, first of all, why the president has those numbers? You have to remember mm -hmm. that from the governor of a province, mm -hmm. a governor is a chairman of RIPF in the province. Mm -hmm. Mayor is chairman of RIPF in the district. Uh, executive sector is whatever. Chief of Mdugudu is the chairman of RIPF in the village. Mm -hmm. So, when they call people, they start from village level to the governor level. And, that, and that's the team you're saying that yeah. you also so want. He already has the team. Yeah, basically, is that that's wrong? Something we, yes, wrong. Because we have changed that. You know we took that to parliament last year. That this should be stopped. No one who holding a public office should be a chairman of a political party. Mm. We said that. We took it even to the prime minister after the parliament. If he, was, he was not able to look into our issue. Mm -hmm. So this is something we want to agree with. Mm -hmm. Basically, a political party should be a political party. Mm -hmm. And the people who are in the public service. Uh, should people, be in the public uh, service. People American should be in the public service. All right. Thank so you. when we go to the field, yeah. we don't... They actually, we see some people coming to interfere with our people, mm -hmm. stopping them. Mm -hmm. But those are issues we have reported to the Minister of Local Government, and, and the Minister of Local Government has mm -hmm. been uh, helpful to us right. because right. they have been able to solve some of those We're problems. We are out of time, Dr. Avineza. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one line, what do you think, in conclusion, in a where you see him? Uh, to, to me... Very quickly, we are out of time. <laughs> to me, it seems that uh, it's too much ambitious. Uh -huh. But to become a President of the Republic... Mm -hmm. It's, it's good to be ambitious, mm -hmm. but with the concrete and the fact, with the positive achieving a result. Yeah. But telling something like, which is not, can be, something we can be achieved within 10 years, yeah. you want to put it in within two months, yeah. I don't think that is too much uh, ambitious. Yeah. But for sure, uh, I will likely to make sure that, uh, yes, Rwandese, yeah. they like actions yeah. than, 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 uh, than words. Yeah. So we have to make sure that uh, whatever... Dr. Frank is saying, yeah. yes, it's good, yeah. but you need to come out with the st strongly strategies, which really you can show that what you are saying can really, you can change. What are the, another thing is like, 
what are really you need to converse what are the new innovation innovative thing that you're bringing you, you are bringing okay. so that we can make sure that what the, the government in position has done yeah. you can just implement on that right yeah. but for sure yeah, time will tell mm -hmm. but to become the president of the public is not something you just just talk you mm -hmm. need to make sure you come out with the action and concrete fact yes we right. have that the facts thing. we have yeah. the actions yeah. and the more strategies will come when we have the, we make them of yeah. course with the uh, when we have the power because i mean there's some some things we have to work together with right. others we cannot work alone as i'm right. saying so if you don't win you'll shelve all the ambitions no mm. why should we oh. we also have parliamentary elections next okay. year so you'll prepare we have for the parliamentary senatorial elections after Perfect. so mm -hmm. i mean we we are not giving up mm -hmm. And we're going to win, and win very big, right. by the way. Mm -hmm. Asante sana. Yes. And of course, thank <laughs> you and good luck. Of course, uh, Dr. Frank, stay with us. Of course, uh, we want to say thank you, Dr. Israel, for being with us on the program. Thank you. Thank you so right. much. And of course, uh, for all of you who have been watching us and uh, tweeting and telling us what you think about the conversation that we've had, we only had one hour to have this conversation, and it doesn't end here. Let's keep talking. The aim of this is to start up those conversations, keep the hashtag going, in focus, RW, hoping that next Sunday we'll have another presidential aspirant right here to try and understand their manifestos and their promises to you. All right? The person who always chooses the wrong leaders is that one who never practices their right to vote. So go out and vote in August 3rd and 4th. Good luck and goodbye for now. My name, as always, is Eugene Anangwe. Goodbye for now. <laughs>